Okay. Um, so uh, just prior to the uh, lunch break, um, we were working to build up um, some structure in the model for what I termed observer processes. So uh, these are processes that that report on the status of the computation over time, but don't govern the evolution of the model. They don't shape the evolution of the model. Rather, they, they tell us about the evolution of the model. And uh, within that uh, brief encounter with observer processes, we um, had specifically seen a, a, a type of observer process that reports on the prevalence of um, of uh, different characteristics within the population. In this case, uh, characteristics associated with with smoking. Okay, and uh, specifically, uh, yes, uh, uh, the screens are still thank you, up. thank you. Um, thanks. So we we had uh, gone and and within any logic. There's this nice declarative feature, this feature where you describe what you want to capture in the form of statistics um, in an intention revealing fashion. We want to count the number of never current and former smokers. And it will compute each of those according to condi corresponding conditions, right? Respective conditions. And uh, that led to behavior at runtime when running the model um, that enacted this, right? So we ran the model and accompanying the, the kind of um, uh, sound and fury associated with the evolution of people's states and so on, were reporting at a higher level as to uh, the model state. And we'll go down here and find that. Um, that it was associated with this population. We have this reporting on things. And, and that was nuts. Um, uh, that had uh, some utility. You can even export this sort of information if you wish to do so, copy it and paste it into a, some sort of structured container. And, and this reflected the fact that, that these models are kind of bottom up in a way. They, um, they report on quantities at the low level and often summarize them in different ways. Um, and uh, commonly within models, we have many such elements of reporting, but really we only half finished the job. I didn't want to separate you for lunch or even worse, um, uh, push you into a close close company with the arriving 17 tables of players um so we didn't we didn't really uh play out the the full extent of the reporting we we, we left it by computing statistics what i like to do now is to actually visualize those statistics and, and make it easier for them to be exported so specifically we're going to add to this model some components that are uh, are going to display this information that we've been collecting. But first, in case anyone wasn't here or needed to get it, I'm going to post, I just post version six of the model um, to the site, to the models built in class folder of the participant information. And uh, I'm now going to go and um, modify the model into a version seven by adding some additional features. And uh, you'll notice that any logic has this annoying habit of sometimes not allowing you to save it, to do save as, unless you like tweak something or like do something. I, I don't understand. You know that way where it doesn't allow you to save that at times? Maybe you okay. Maybe you're you're not acquainted. But if I save it like that, um, there are times where it grays out save as, so I can't. Yeah, you know, yeah. Anyway, okay. So we're gonna get started in version seven of the model. Okay. 
Okay. So what I'd like you to do is we're going to add in a graph of these people. Now, where does this graph going to live? We're going to graph these quantities that we just computed with these statistics. Where will that graph live? And are you wanting to riddle me back? It would live in, would it live in person? Would it live in name or would it live in a scenario? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what to live in me. Okay. Um, most commonly we put these graphs in me. Sometimes we put them in scenarios if they're scenario specific information. But if it's kind of in common that we want to visualize these across many scenarios, um, we will commonly put it in me. Okay, all right. Is it at all common to put a graph inside of an agent so that you can like track the agents? You, you can do it. It's fairly expensive to do that. If there's many, many agents, you'll have many, many graphs. Um, when I say expensive, I, I don't mean, you know, dollars, you know, loonies and toonies or something like that. Um, I, what I mean is actually that it's computationally um, quite burdensome. Um, it will require longer to run. It will uh, take more memory as you're running. Now, there are times with, particularly with a smaller model, with more rich endogenous dynamics, maybe involving, um, so, so maybe it's a model of, of uh, uh, substance use, and you wanna track people's uh, level of craving for a drug, and you wanna capture something about the level of the drug in their system, and their level of tolerance, and you wanna view those behaviors over time. You might do that with a small population and explore. Or maybe it's a model of, um, maybe it's an in immunoepidemiological model and you're track, tracking within host dynamics for viral load or some load of some pathogen, a spirus, or, or um, you know, in the context of, uh, uh, of a parasitic infection, some, uh, some level of, of parasite within their system. So there you might, um, malaria levels. Um, uh, of a pathogen related to malaria. There you might plot those out in an individual level and you might secure some insight from those um, when exploring the model. So it's not impossible, but, and, and I have done that before. It's just, you wanna, you wanna be very judicious and um, deliberative about when you do that. Yeah, I would say. I don't know if Wade, you wanna opine on that. No, I, I don't have anything to add. Costly, but it's sometimes appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I will say, um, as um, Wade could to teach about for in some extensive period, um, there are uh, there are strategies. If you have a model at scale, you want a model that simulates a million agents, one point two million for the province of Saskatchewan, and so on. Um, there you you need to proceed in a in a in a cost in a in a fashion that's quite conscious about performance costs of different model structures, and even for a mid-sized model, hundred thousand agents, two hundred thousand agents, or something like that, it, you're you're going to you're going to want to think about you know deliberately about. Um, how you structure things in the model so that you can have some runs that are unburdened by reporting that is not needed, and particularly visual reporting, particularly things involving things like graphs, et cetera. Often those are, far be it for me to discourage, I, I think those are key to learning from a model, but there are times we do what are called production runs. In a data science, we alternate on the one hand between exploratory data analysis and on the other sort of more production oriented data analysis, right? We'll have pipelines for production use for, for machine learning or what have you. Um, and here too, there's kind of exploratory model use. 
And then there's production modules where you want to run it at scale with hundreds of realizations. You run it again and again and again because of the stochastics. And you want to see results over all those runs. And you're not going to look at the behavior of each run visually. And there are ways in any logic for running it in this sort of headless fashion that doesn't involve an, uh, a, a visual interface. Um, and uh, amongst other things, there's a difference between um, the food scent, right? Um, no. But, you know, that's gender. Yeah, I'm saying the food was brought in here. Oh, yeah. The food, the food. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, you could see different sides of my brain or something like a different thing. So, um, so within those contexts, if you have a, a scenario that's a parameter variation experiment, it actually won't, so it's running the model again and again and again with different assumptions about parameters or, or with the same parameter values, but just running it again and again to have a, a big collection so that you're not privileging any one run, but you're seeing the variability between runs. Um, it will it will use something called run fast for that, whereas which won't involve outputs visually and so on. Whereas other runs like the, the main ones we've been using run at once and they let you see um, the visual depictions. Um, but we we you know um, again could comment in detail about some of the trade offs associated with things and custom yeah, I wouldn't rely yeah. on run fast to get you an optimal no no situation. like if you're pushing a million agents exactly if that will not be sufficient but for, for feature, but for a mid a mid-sized model like two hundred thousand agents you can you can do that yeah 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 um okay um but let's 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 go add a um a plot here so to do this we're going to main that's where we're going to add it be sure what element in, on, is shown on the canvas at a time. It's a common rookie mistake to be showing the wrong thing, drag things into the wrong one, and suddenly you've added state charts for substance use to main or something like that in, in ways that don't make sense. So make sure main is up. Here we'll go to the palette, and we're going to go to an area of the palette that has not yet been explored. It's the analysis area of the palette, okay? So the palette is here. You'll notice all these different palette choices. We've been mostly operating with this agent one, but there's another one called analysis, and you can see it right here. And this provides us with a set of tools that will help us analyze over time model runs, over time and sometimes as a whole. Okay? Okay. So... We're going to drag in a time plot here. Okay. I'll note that we're going to make use of many of these. We're going to create scatter plots with plots. We're going to create histograms with histogram. We'll probably we may end up creating 2D histograms to summarize run many different runs, what have you, um, during this boot camp. Um, but here we dragged in, we clicked and dragged into main a time plot. Do we see that? Okay, so I'm going to plot out um, uh, 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 let's see, uh, smoking um, time plot. I want to do it actually for more than smoking. I want to say, you know, sort of, um, I'm going to call it prevalent case counts time plot. Because I, I actually want to plot, I want to call it successive snapshots of the mall. That's why we're dealing with prevalence, not its not the chain. Dealing with, and we're going to plot out smokers first, and then we're going to plot out heart disease. And eventually we're going to, we may consider plotting out sort of the product of them. So 
people with certain smoking status and certain heart disease. Okay, so prevalent case counts, time plot. Yes. Sorry, um, yes. you have a slightly delayed question relating to uh, running multiple models. Uh, they're asking when you run headless models in a batch, is it better to take the outputs to a different program yeah. for visualization? Great, great question. Thank you, Sela. Yeah, so um, uh, for those who didn't hear the questions in the chat here, when you when you run headless mode in a, in a batch, is it better to take the outputs to a different program for visualization and statistics? The answer is generally yes. I mean, um, any logic provides in this analysis uh, a toolkit, you know, some, some basic analysis tools that are quite good for exploratory understanding of model behavior and, for, you know, for, for learning some basics about the patterns of what's going on under the hood of the model. And those are really important. Modeling is learning. And we, we talk about the learning cycle associated with models. If you can speed up that learning cycle by showing things immediately from model runs, seeing them, amongst other things, you'll spot, spot problems sooner. You'll spot interesting behaviors sooner. You'll learn about the causes of model behavior sooner. That matters. But for what we call production needs, for papers or for summarizing results in detail, for doing detailed breakdowns, for summarizing people's biographies over time, we use external libraries. And our, our lab has a, almost a cottage industry of external libraries for doing various sorts of analyses. And sometimes maintaining those um, is not without its work. Um, as we, way it's experiencing for an earlier project right now. Um, so uh, so we do, a, we have many R libraries uh, and there's some Python libraries for summarizing model outputs. So we'll run it through the simulation, put it out for use in R and put it out for use in or Python or what have you. And then we'll do, you know, nice charts and exploratory analyses. And, and at times we'll put into shiny apps for those familiar with those R shiny to explore interactively, to have dashboards where you can see things. Sometimes we summarize, you know, many, many different runs of a model, um, not just for the same parameters, but with different assumptions. And we'll put them out in a way that people can interactively explore and even ask what if questions in that. I know I have other colleagues who have done it in Tableau, et cetera. And um, it makes for some very rich interactive kind of, uh, uh, explorations externally. Uh, but it does require some work outside of any logic in these tools. So hopefully that's helpful. So in general, yes, it's, it's desired. And there's a, you know, there's a lot to learn about, okay, what data should model output? It, 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 you generally don't want to output the entire state of the model down to every person's state you know, every time unit or something like that, that um, generally is not needed, but there's often many quantities we do export and we need to be careful to keep those curated with information on what gave rise to them, what particular run, ideally what random seed, um, what values to the parameters, et cetera. Okay, so I could hold forth on that for a while as could wait. Okay. So here's our time plot. Um, so here we're gonna plot out a value. You notice the time plot lets us plot several quantities over time, okay? These are commonly used for cross-sectional depictions, like a count at different points in time of some, some quantities. So the first of them is gonna be called never smokers. And the value, is going to be population dot never smokers. Do you see that? Autocomplete is your friend. Will someone make sure that Christina is equipped to perform autocomplete? It's control space on a PC and and Linux, and it's command space on a Mac. 
options option did we feed misinformation yesterday <laughs> okay <laughs> No wonder it goes. No wonder it like goes out. And <laughs> okay, option space, option space. Okay. Um, moving right along. Um, okay. So we're gonna plot out never smokers, but we're not gonna end there. We're gonna add current smokers and um, mutatus mutandus. Okay. So. All we do is we modify the inessentials here. So what am I going to put here? Anyone going to tell me? Who can tell me what I'm going to put here? Yeah. Now, how does it know how to compute the number of never smokers or the number of current smokers? Hmm? What in the population? The statistics. The statistics we put in there before lunch. Do you remember that? I'll take that as a yes. Um, former smokers. How do I make sure any logic is happy with this model that it thinks it knows what I mean? Where do I go? Who can tell me? Yeah, build. Build early, build often. Okay. Now we go to projects. And we're going to run this one, run early, run often. Take it from an old man. Okay. The plot lies above. And ladies and gentlemen, the plot thickens. Okay. Thank you, Larissa. Um, okay, so what's going on? Can anyone tell me? But broadly, what's going on? Can, can someone give a narrative for what's happening here that describes in a word what's happening? Everybody started out as never smokers. Good. Um, but some became uh, current smokers. Yes. And, uh, as current smokers grew, then former smokers grew because people went from current to former. And they kind of have a mirror effect on each other. Brilliant, Larissa. Brilliant. I couldn't have asked for a better explanation. You win the gold star. That's awesome. I was looking at exactly those three features for explanation, and I thought I'd have to call three times. But instead, you did it all at once. A trifecta of excellence. Good job. Seriously. That's great. That's exactly it. Everyone started as current... As, as never smokers. At first, some of those never smokers converted to current smokers. And it wasn't till a bit later that former smokers caught up. Why is that? Could someone explicate a little bit more what Larissa said, or even repeat back what she said? Why is it that former smokers lag current smokers? She nailed it, but why? Why does, why does the rise in former smokers only occur after current smokers? Why don't they all Rise together. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, because of the what? The structure. You have to be a current smoker, you before, be you a current smoker before, before you can become a former smoker. So you have to pass through this. So of course, current smokers are going to rise before former smokers. It, it's in the nature of the system structure that you're going to have that behavior. Now, why is it that broadly there's kind of a mirror effect? She said it again. She, she led us to an understanding, but I'd like you to, to mirror, like, why is this peak in current smokers associated with this dip in former smokers? Why is this peak in former smokers associated with this dip in current smokers? Why is this peak in former smokers associated with this dip in current smokers? Can anyone pause it a reason? What the perspective of the, and it just go to the uh, uh, former smokers? Yeah. This, 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 um, the yeah, so, 
so look, if a, if a bunch by chance become current smokers from former smokers, it will increase this count, the count that are current smokers and decrease this count. Now, I would argue that that mirror effect is somewhat more pronounced, somewhat later, like down here, than it is early on. Why is that? Why, why, do, I, why do I say that? I mean, look at this. It's almost a, a precise mirror image of, of some curve here, right? Um, in this region. Whereas here, yeah, it's true, but you know, this is going up, but this ain't going going, uh, this ain't going down. Former smoke current smokers are going up, but former smokers ain't going down, right? Um uh it is true that there's, you know, this goes up and, and that goes down a bit, but these they're both headed broadly a trend upwards. Why is it that it's yes? Because they're still gone. taking people from the never smokers. They're taking people from the never smokers. Because there's another inflow to current smokers here besides from current smokers. But down here, they're really, you know, all you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, if I could abuse the analogy, right? In order to have people go into current smokers, they can't come anymore from never smokers. Why not? Why not down here? Why can't they come from never smokers? There ain't no never smokers to come from, right? Eh? Okay. Okay. So, so structure determines behavior. Will this model look different with different particular assumptions? Sure. But the, the structure of the model, if you have different parameter assumptions, you'll still get these broad regularities. It will still start really high for number of smokers and it will still decline as long as everyone starts as a number of smokers. There will still be these broad regularities, this orderliness to the up, to the up that reflects the structure. And that will be invariant across, will be conserved across different different runs. It's structure determines behavior. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've seen how to build up this reporting, but I, let's take it one step further. Because often this is nice and we can take a nice snapshot of it and 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 have a and, and this is super important, you know, to be able to look at this, glance at this and see see the outcomes. And we'll come back to that. But I want to do something more, if I may. Um, so I want to go here and call up Microsoft Excel. And if I press this Windows thing on my case, I can see Excel right away. Do you see that? I'd like you to call it up. Okay. And for some reason, it, yeah, okay. humble. Okay. I'm going to create a blank worksheet. I said, okay. And I clicked on blank worksheet. I'm going to paste. And there we go. You want to analyze this data separately? You want to analyze it in R? You want to plot it out in Stata, whatever? Um, SAS, here's your ticket. Okay. okay, we good with that? So we get output from one of these graphs. These graphs actually store the data associated with them. Okay. Um, okay. So how did I do that? Well, I, I used that little top, that little thing that looked like a clipboard on the upper right. Okay. Are we okay with that? Okay. Okay. So what we haven't done is had, is added smoking status to this plot. And we could either do it in this plot. I was kind of torn by this. You probably saw my indecision. Do we add it to this plot or do we create a different one of smoking steps? If they were in very incommensurable units or you know, size of quantities, I'd say do it a different one for sure. But here, should we should we put it in the same plot? Are we a bit busy? Or do we do we do it in a different plot? What's your preference? Crowd is not going wild. Um, what's your preference? Different plot? Different plot? Okay, okay, we'll do it in a different plot. Okay, I'll show you a trick. Want to see a trick? Okay. Um, 
So we'll go back to Maine. We're going to have this other plot in Maine. I'm going to press the control button, click on this, and I'm going to drag upwards, okay? And it will create a second plot with the same settings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to situate it above this one. But instead of that one being called prevalent case counts time one, I'm, I'm going to say prevalent heart disease case counts. The other one I should really call prevalent smoking status case counts. Okay, time plot. And for this upper one, instead of saying never smokers, what will it say? If I want to report on, if I want to report on people's Heart disease status. What will its two, what will two things that on which it will report say? Mm -hmm. Healthy heart, heart disease. Yeah, healthy heart and heart disease. Okay. Um, or maybe we call it no heart disease and heart disease. Um, so we can say no heart disease, and instead of population. Oh, have we defined it yet? No, we have to go, where do we have to define it? Where do we define how to compute pe number count of people with no heart disease and count of people with heart disease? Where do we go? You you riddle me that. Where do we go? The population. Population. We go to population, we go to statistics, and we do plus, and you tell me what to type. I'll say healthy heart. I'll just break the symmetry. Um, and I'll say, what do I type here? Mutatis mutandis, what do I type? So here are the state names. What do I type? What do I type there for the condition? Anyone? Good. Good. Yeah, we don't call it brackets in computer science. We're more we are more particular in computer science than in math and stats. And math and stats tend to say, oh, kind of bracket. And no, this is this be a parentheses. Okay. Um, and then there's square brackets, which are separate, and then there's curly brackets. Mm -hmm. Which I would call braces. Yeah, I call them braces. Yeah, you can call them braces too. Braces is a is a good term. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will agree with that. Um person dot healthy heart, right? And it does fill that out. Oh, health, not health heart, healthy heart. Mm -hmm. You getting the pattern? And we're gonna come back. This, this is pretty encouraging, but there's limits on this. There's things that will do really sweet and real nice like, and then there's things that are it won't do for you. I'll come back and deal with this in a minute. Healthy heart. And um, um, we'll call it heart disease. Um, it's not, I don't quite like that name, but we'll call it heart disease. Okay. We'll get this up there on the site for you, Jared. Just a minute. Doing okay, thank you. Okay, sure. For heart disease, what do we, what do we type there? You tell me, you tell us, me, Tandis. Patient, not in state. Okay, good. In state, yeah. You know. Does does it have to be capitalized? Yeah. Yeah, darn right it does. Uh and then good. Heart heart disease. Heart disease. Hey. 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 Okay, build early, build often. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's happy. Who needs TA help? The TAs are undersubscribed right now. Does anyone online, would anyone online like a friendly TA to pair up with you or to, to help you? We're eager to assist, darn right. Yeah, thank you, Larissa. I appreciate your eagerness. Okay, heart disease. Okay, so we've added some statistics. Now what can we do with them? 
in, in for that plot? What do we have to do? For no heart disease, what are we going to put? You tell me. What are we going to put here? Hmm? Healthy heart. Yeah. What do we do for the next one? Heart disease. Mutatis mutandis. Heart disease. You just change the inessential things. That's roughly what the Latin is. Build happy. Build early, build often. And what's the other part of that? Run early, run often. I'll, I'll add version early, version often. And save early, save often. <laughs> okay. I'm going to run. Here's that. And here we have a kind of people with heart disease. Wait a minute. There's something wrong here. What do we not do? What did I not do? What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> what the heck? I, I, I thought I deleted that. Oh, it still says, oh, somehow I deleted the wrong one. Gosh. Okay. Heart disease. I, I, I deleted the wrong one. When I pressed this X, I, I probably thought to was deleting the one below, but it deleted one above or something. Anyway, uh, heart disease. Sorry about that, folks. Mind you, the title can have a space in it. The title can have curious characters in it. Just like constructors of boot camps. Okay. Um, okay. There we go. Okay. So this is great. So I, I want to I wanna ask you some questions about this. So we saw the trajectory of smoking below. Remember this? Larissa walked us through the reasons underlying these dynamics. And we saw that structure determines behavior. That these patterns, many of these patterns in their broad features are dictated by the structure of the system. And it's affected by the particulars of the parameter values, but they, you know, the fact that number of smokers is going down really fast at first, the fact that increasingly current smokers and former smokers mirror each other, the fact that that uh, former smokers lagged current smokers early on, you might think that those are, oh, they're, those are just, those are just kind of, Curious things about these numbers. No, they were brought up from the structure. Ladies and gentlemen, can I hold forth in a soliloquy? Yes. And it, you'll forgive me if it's not an iambic pentameter. <laughs> but all too often in this day and age, we talk about data driven science. And I have long, for decades, sought to apply the tools of data science. When some of you weren't even born, I was taking my first machine learning class at MIT in 1991, I think it was. And I followed the data revolution, big data revolution since that time, applying diverse machine learning tools from Bayesian tools to kernel methods, classical statistical decision theory, to deep learning neural networks. Took my first neural network course in 1990. And long, you know, had interest and connections to all these things. But I will tell you that my status as a system scientist has given me a very specific perspective that has empowered a tremendous number of insights over the years about data. You don't understand 
the principles of data generating processes. That data is generated from an underlying system. You will miss many of the insights just begging to be elicited from data. You will look at data and say, well, it's going up and going down. And you won't reflect on why that's happening. What is it about the structure of the system that's making that happen, that's causing that to happen? You'll look at many data sets and you'll consider them as solitudes. Oh, this is doing this, and you'll analyze that. And oh, we can predict these things, huh? and then we'll analyze this one, and then we'll analyze that one and that one. But you'll leave the real value on the table often, which is the ability to see them all as different facets, different faces of and whispering about different sides of the underlying system because they're all bound together. They're all joined together by logical connections implied by the system structure that gave rise. And in fact, one of the key tools of systems data science, the Taken Embeddings Theorem from mathematician Flores Takens in the 1980s, I believe it was, says that a time series from a couple dynamical systems actually tells you information not only about the parts of the system from which you measure it particularly. So if you have a time series of, of data from the emergency room on waiting times in the emergency room, it's easy to think, oh, well, that's data about the emergency room. And you want, you want information about the wards, you have to go collect another time series, you have to go measure. You want information about community services, you have to go it turns out that Morrison Taken's embedding theorem states that no, actually, what's going when it when the system is coupled, when what goes on in the emergency rooms collectively, what's going on in the wards, like where the beds are free in the wards, determines what beds are free in the emergency room, which determines the waiting, which contributes the waiting time, and when then what's going on in the wards, well. Actually, be whispered to you about what you measure from the from the emergency room. And if a lot of the reason people are backing up the wards is because of delayed discharges, because of ALC patients, alternative level patients who require alternative levels of care, but they don't require hospital care, but they're stuck there because they can't get into a long term care facility, don't have step down care and transitional care unit. Don't, can't get hospital in the home or 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 the uh, the uh, in home services from home care, or they can't get access to a home near their family or what have you. Those things are reflected in the data you measure from the emergency room. So in a coupled system, when you measure things from a certain point, it actually whispers to you in a certain very technical way, in a, a very specific way that can be quantified about things from the rest of the system. Data from an, data from the world has features because of characteristics of the underlying system. And if you understand system science, something about the, the dynamics of underlying systems, you can come to understand data with a much richer lens. And much of the problems you encounter with people without any system science background, without background of describing the structure of systems in the world as they encounter each data set as a, as a solitude, as its, as its own little world. And they don't realize that they're bound together by the strictures of the logic of the underlying systems. And those strictures of logic reveal themselves not just in one time series, but in their relationship to one another. And it's that system, systems data science perspective that lets you get much richer insights from whole collections of time series because they collectively whisper to you, this hinted about that underlying system. And you can kind of triangulate what's going on in different areas of the system by, and, and broader than just where those are measured, by listening to many of those time series at once and putting them together hologram-like, like putting together many, many pictures of a cathedral. If you sort of arrange them and you start to see the structure of the whole cathedral in 3D. 
that's what you get with a systems data science perspective. So the fact that we could read these things off is a reflection of our underlying understanding of system structure. And this is a superpower you can use in understanding data. And it's unfortunately altogether missed when we train our epidemiologists, we train our folks in public health. It's a skill that's that's missed without that system science training. So I implore, I exhort you to consider making use of a system science perspective to bring new insights to bear and depth of understanding when you encounter data for the world. Because modeling is indeed a matter of learning, and it's learning about the world and from empirical evidence of the world more deeply, more quickly, and more robust. So let's take a look at this graph. So I I finished my soliloquy, and uh, I I I recognize that it, it what it lacked in Shakespearean grandeur. I hope it'll secure in in longevity in your mind. Um. Uh, but I recognize the crowd is not going wild. Um, okay, so so let's, <laughs> moving right along, let's return to our graph, this upper graph, this graph with heart disease and no heart disease. And I want someone in this room to help tell a story about why we see this. I'm, I want to ask you a particular question. So uh, some particular questions. Why is heart disease... Why, why is the number of people with heart disease rising early on? Why, why, is, it, why is it kind of going through this rise early on? Hmm? We look at it with the smoking as well. Mm. Because they whisper to us about a common underlying system, indeed. And you're asking just the right question. So uh, mumble, I think it's over here. Um, okay, uh, so here we go. Yeah. So why is it going up kind of, why, why is it starting going up here? Why isn't it just flat as a as Saskatchewan? Why isn't it? Except for the Cypress Hills, and the hills of the north, the Narrow Hills National Park, and, and grasslands. <laughs> 70 mile viewed and oh, okay. Yeah, no seven, but um why why is it not flat there? A little bit, it's just graphing the distribution you gave it. Sorry? It's just graphing the distribution you gave it. Um well that's that's true. It is graphic that but that distribution is collected from the underlying model, right? So why is it why is it not flat here? Why why is the number of people with heart disease in the underlying model rising here? Anyone? Well, so we have a non-zero uh, hazard rate. Yeah, and they all start as without heart disease, right? Um, they're 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 all starting without heart disease with a healthy heart, and so some of them are converting over here. Why does it speed up here? Why does it sort of accelerate? Do you want to bring a hypothesis, a reasonable hypothesis for this? Because more and more. People start smoking. More and more people start smoking. The prevalence of smoking is going up, and that actually leads to higher rates of heart disease, right? Um, and that's really concerning, right? Heart disease is, is getting to very high levels. Is this to be celebrated that it's going down? Yeah. Oh, why is that? No. Well, I, I mean, we have fewer people with heart disease. Isn't that, isn't that a good thing? There's fewer people with heart disease in, in this model. Because they died. Yeah, they died. Darn, darn right. Darn right. They, they've died. But you have to understand that oft these understandings need to be articulated in real world data sets. Remember, remember a month yesterday, and you might have thought it was hyperbole when I said that sometimes without an understanding of doing system. Sometimes assessing whether a trend is good or bad is hard. 
So a trend of falling heart disease, is that good or bad? Well, it depends on the underlying system, right? In this case, the falling trend of heart disease is by and large bad because it's a reflection of deaths that are occurring over time. In other cases where we have an intervention to improve healthy eating, to improve physical activity, to lower the rates of stroke, a falling rate of heart disease might be good, right? It reflects the underlying system structure. Structure determines behavior. And it's through the lens of understanding that structure, often that we can get more reliable insights in interpreting the behavior. Now, it's not a sure thing, right? Like, I, I, I will tell you, I'm fairly confident that this acceleration here reflects the higher rates of smoking, but we can do controlled experiments to test that, right? For example, we could set up a version of this model where we actually go and, and, and have the system in balance as far as smokers and never smokers from the start and see if we see this sort of uh, rise. We could also run this model again and again and see if we reliably see this rise as the number of current smokers goes up. Now, these are things we can do in a model we can't do in the world, right? Like we, we, we can't set up the world so that there are equal number of, you know, number of smokers and current smokers, and former smokers are in balance. But we can try out these experiments here and we can test reasons why we see certain behaviors. Okay, so we we have some ways of, of, of creating these graphs and we can understand these graphs through the lens of the underlying systems. I would note that we could export this graph. So here we go. We have former smokers and we have those with heart disease and 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 uh, different uh, and no heart disease. And we can plot them side by side with the same values for the same time right next to each other and could perform you know, analysis in your package of books um, and create prettier graphs than these, right? Mm -hmm. Um, okay, um, great. Um, so we're, we're summarizing aspects of the systems and Um, let me ask this, um, if we look collectively at these two graphs, let's say for time for without privileging any one time. Let's suppose we were to go and uh, um and talk about time 40 here, okay? Um uh and we were to consider how many heart people with heart disease there are, how many people without heart disease, where they go down in time 40 here and count the number of current smokers and uh, and current smokers and former smokers and never smokers. Would that totally, do those numbers collectively determine exactly the state of the model? Yeah. You can have that same number for all of those quantities. In fact, with different numbers of current smokers with heart disease, current smokers not with heart disease, etc. More than that, doesn't tell you exactly which agents have heart disease and which don't. Um, these are summaries of the model, and they're useful summaries. And we often slice and dice it in different ways. And let me make an utterance of some significance for those who apply the trade of compartmental modeling, if I may. With HMAS models, we have a very fine-grained representation of population. By contrast, in an aggregate compartmental model, we can capture some population heterogeneity, maybe five-year age groups at a more fine-grained level, or you know, children, working age adults, and and elders um, at the coarser grained level. Um, we may divide it up by sex and age group, for example, in an aggregate model. It helps the number of people 
or susceptible in each sex and each group, or in fact, the, the in each sex and each group. So, um, but the problem is there, we've kind of dictated, we baked into the structure of the model, the age categories. We can only aggregate up from there. All right. People in the room will probably think about a post set. You can aggregate up in a partially ordered set. But anyway, <laughs> I wish I could talk about that now. But we can only aggregate up, make things coarser, right? With an agent-based model, we can slice and dice as fine or as, as coarsely as we want. We can divide up the uh, people into different age groups if we want to by, we can distinguish you know, zero to one month of age, one to or one to six months of age, six to 12 months of age, 12 to four years. And for another output, we could do it into different age categories. We have the luxury of dictating how we summarize this in different ways because we're dealing with some of the finest grain data you can have, which is at an individual level. And that gives us great flexibility in comparing against real world data. Mm -hmm. So here um, we, we have a really powerful tool at our disposal with agent-based models of being able to summarize it um, in, in, at different levels of resolution. Now, there's some more lessons, though, to be learned here, and, and there's There's two more I'd like to teach. I'm mindful of the time and want to get in some time for projects today. And um, I want to show show of hands for different tasks. First, I'm going to save this one to the drive for anyone who would like to, to obtain it from there. And I, I, I need... I need expressions of interest in different ways we could take this model. So, three different ways for our remind, uh, remaining non project time this afternoon. Three different ways. Number one, we could summarize information about the model in a way that is. Oh, it's just not possible in aggregate models in general. We could summarize information on people's histories. At, a, at an individual level, each person will have a history. Maybe it's the number of years they've been a smoker. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the number of times they've tried to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was the year at which they first initiated smoking. Something about their history. And, and we could output information summaries across the population of those histories, like a, a histogram saying, you know, how many people have tried to quit this many times, that many times, that many times, or how many, how many pack years they've smoked or what, how many years they've spent just as many. We could do something like that. That's not possible in an aggregate model. It's not possible in a compartmental model. You could capture people's histories. Mm -mm. Won't cut. So that's one thing we could do. I won't teach you that. The second thing would be also not too bad. There's some chance we could do both, which is we could summarize. So right now we're we're summarizing prevalence information, the count of people who are current smokers, the count of people who are former smokers, the count of people who have heart disease. Right now, it's cross-sectional, right? At this point in time. How about capturing what I variously call flow information or incidents, right? Heart disease incidents, new cases of heart disease on a per week basis, or new cases of heart disease on per year basis. 
new cases, uh, new initiations of smoking for a year basis. Summarizing the chain from year to year. Very common need, right? In epidemiology, in public health, to summarize incident. We could do that. And there's a chance we could do both together. I'd like, like before we break for, for a project, depending on our project. We could do that and we can have it all nicely displayed and so on. That's one thing. Two things we could do there. Possibly we could move light, move fast and live light on the land and do both. The third thing though that we could do goes in a different direction. We could take the bull by its horns and we could introduce, not in this model, but a different one network structure. And we get a, a, people interacting over networks. I want to show a hand. First of all, how many people would like to do either the first or the second? Okay, three. Okay, four. Four. Okay. How many people would prefer to do networks? Two. Okay. <laughs> three. Okay. I see. Some people voted for both, um, which is, uh, yeah, I, I, I like to have my cake and eat it too. Kind of, yeah. um, mm -mm. Um, that's uh, th that's good cake, but it, it isn't always possible. Yeah. Okay, we go with this. Okay. So I think the odds have it. The first of them. I mean the the first two. So um, of those first two. How many people want to do the? How many per people want to do the first of them? Um, so, in other words, uh, where we compute the, uh, the the historical information on the person, a number of times done. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, how about five? And how many people would instead prefer to start at those two? Prefer to start with incidence information. How many people got heart disease? Some people got started smoking. Okay, so it seems that uh, historical. Okay, so we'll we'll do it. We'll, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Um, great. Thank you for your voting. Um, okay, so I posted version seven. We're going to now go to version eight. Uh, but are there any questions about this, um, that what we've been building up here? Any questions about anything I've done before we delve onwards? Onwards, I might add, and upwards. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. So I am going to see, wait, this is a case where it doesn't allow saving. Wait. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Uh, Select the model. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's maybe that's it. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That that that's probably it. Great. Uh. Okay. Hey, version eight. Okay, we're gonna add some historical information. Um. Now, I was a little bit glib in my description because I kind of pulled it into one. Almost one breath. Um, two rather different structures of game conservation that can be computed. So, so one of them is a lot easier to gather. Not, not like hugely easier, but it will take less time. One thing would be like very easy is keep in track of the number of times like someone has quit smoking. Uh, uh, that's 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 really really easy to do. Um, uh, we could also keep track of the number of relapse attempts and or the number of cases of relapse. Those are really easy. What would take a, a little bit longer? It, it's it's got more finesse, that's for sure. But it's sweet. It, it's it's like the solution. Sweet. Um, would be how long they've spent as a current smoker. For how long they spent. Which would, which, how many people would like the first short one with the sense that we might actually have a higher chance of getting on to those flow statistics? 
uh, to the entity. Okay, how many people want the, the, the slightly more involved? You want it, don't you? Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, it's short, but it's 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 sweet. It has some finesse. I warn you, it has some finesse. It'll make you think. I don't know if that's considered undesirable after a while. Um, you ready? Okay. Okay, so we'll steal ourselves to the task. Okay. Um, okay, first step to do one, I'm gonna get the principle to, you'll see the pattern and then we'll elaborate, okay? Okay. So it's not either or, you can do both. We'll do that, that first one, it's so, it's so easy. Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna keep track for each person how many times they've quit smoking. You ready? Where would we accumulate that information? We want to keep track. Which person where? How many times they put smoking? Where would where would we keep that information in the model? In the scenario? In main or in person? In person, because it's it's an aspect of the person situation. Remember, person defines a theory of person, a kind of notion of personness with respect to the model. It defines cookie cutter that we use again and again to make different particular people. So it'll say each person is associated, has associated with some count times that they quit smoking. So here we're gonna go. We're gonna go, how would we keep track of something that varies over time? Very. A variable. Yes. Okay, here we go, variable. Okay, this is going to be. Wait, you brought in the croissants, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, I didn't get a chance to eat lunch, so I'm, um, <laughs> I'm eyeing snacks. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is going to be called count cessation. Um, I'm going to call it count quits. Okay. Now that's not a formal title, a count Dracula. It's a it's a count of quints, okay? Um okay. No, it's not quints, quits. Okay. Um quints. Okay. Or so you calling it count cessation counts. This is a count. So what type is it? It's a what? Is it a double? It's an integer, an int. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, and its value will be zero. Initial, its initial value will be zero. Remember, its job in life is to store information to vary over time, but its initial value will start off zero. That's different from the default for a parameter. Default for a parameter is, well, if you don't specify any value for it, it'll be this. It's not a matter of the variance. It's not like a dark set that value. No, no, it's, if you just don't happen to specify anything, it'll use that value. Here, it's actually starting at the value zero, and then it won't change. It, now, here's what I want to ask you. Where will this change? What mechanism in this model? These, these transitions, these here transitions, depict mechanism, particular causal pathways. One causal pathway involves initiation that affects the person's health. Another causal pathway that along which things can change within this model is cessation. Another one is relapse. Those are different, particularly generative pathways to use the language of critical realism, of, of, Tilly, Poss of uh, Pawson and Tilly. Um, so where would this, along which pathway would that be changing? You tell me. What thing would change that? The occurrence of a what? Between people? When you enter the state, former smoker. Okay. When you enter it, or it could be more crisply during cessation. It's we can, we cessation is a is a synonym for quitting. Um I don't mean to imply it's permanent quitting. Um 
Uh, I was weighing whether to call it cessation attempts or count cessation attempts, but but anyway, I sidestep by that by calling it count quits. Um, but maybe anyway, you you could argue about it. Um, but we can associate an action here, and what will this action do when they go across it? What will happen to that count? It'll do what? It'll increment. It'll rise. And I'm going to show you in Java three ways to make it increment. Okay. And you can pick which one speaks to you. Yeah. You ready? Okay. Here we go. One way is count quits equals count quits plus one. Do I need a semicolon? Do I need a semicolon? Why? Tell you do this. Make it happen. We're changing the situation, the model, the state of the model. So we need a semicolon. It's 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 morally like an exclamation point. Do it. Okay. You ready with that? You you comfortable? Uh huh. Okay. So that's one way. A little bit wordy. If to kind of look at both sides. So this Thing on the right side, this left side, but it's basically saying, you know, take the current value, add one to it, and use it as the new value. But it's a little bit, it's a little bit busy, wordy. Okay? There's another way to do it, which is more succinct. And it's plus equals one. And that means Take the value here, add one to it, and update it with that. And of course, we could change it. Like in other contexts, we might do plus equals 10 or something, but but it's plus equals one. Okay. And 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 that means take a value and make it one bigger. Add one to it, make it. And here you don't have to look. Is it left and right the same? Um, but there's an even more succinct way. There's a more succinct, but a way that sometimes criticized is obscure. That's a bit of, a bit of sort of idiom within the the C family of languages, and you know what it is, right? Is that the, some folks know in the room what it is. Plus plus. So oops, not not plus plus one, plus plus. This also means make it one bigger. Now, why am I showing you this? Well. Preferences vary as to, you know, what speaks most to you. You will see all three forms, and particularly the first and the last in models. And this form is, you will, you'll see it in some of the example models. You will see it by the hand of the instructor <laughs> in some of the models. If I get further... Dismay you. Um, and you all know what it means. It just means increase it by one. It's short, it's sweet, and believe me, for the computer scientists, it's not in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are we are we okay with this? Okay. Um, so you pick pick your way of doing it. I'll I'll pick mine. Okay, we're gonna build this. Make sure it's a happy camper. It's happy. All three of those ways are equivalent. None is any faster than the others. They all get converted into the same thing under the hood. Okay. Okay, so, so we have a count of times they've quit. Are we okay with this? Okay, now we want to summarize it at the level of the model. I mean, we, we could always, well, let's run it, let's run it. Build early, build often, run early, run often, save early, save often, version early, version often. So I'm right clicking here and I'm gonna say run. And where could I see that information? If I wanna see it, where can I go down and see it? Can't see it right here. I'm not gonna see it up above right now. Where could I Where could I do it? Yeah, I could go to the population. I call it this developer panel by this yonder button. And then I drag down here and I go to population. And where could I see it? Well, if I go over here, oh my goodness. 
This person is Tron. Person is Tron. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? You know, I'd like to suggest maybe uh, Larissa or Wade could sit next to Christina to also just just be there because she's alone in this, and uh, it'll be a it'll be a good thing to be able to provide. Me. Okay, um, okay, so. Check it. Okay, so we saw that that information is being carried. Saw a co coffee cup being carried away. Um, anyway, keep keep your eye out. Okay, um, so that information is there, but we're not displaying it. How could we display it? Anyone? Well, I'll show you a way. We could we could kind of sum across the population. We could take the average. Where would we do that if we want to? sum across the population the number of quit attempts or we want to take the average across the population or look at the max of, of those numbers um where could we do that back at main in the population we could we know how to do that kind of old pattern let's however do something different may we may we um okay um, so let's go up to Maine, and we are going to take this in a different direction. We're going to make use of another denizen of the palette, of the analysis palette, if we may. Okay. So... I'm going, to, I'm going to use this to teach a couple principles, and all these things will be useful when we take on that bigger challenge of computing the number of amount of time someone has spent in the uh, smoking state. Okay. So we're going to go to the palette, and we're going to drag in, or we're, we're going to go to the, sorry, the analysis palette, and we're going to drag in two things. One, we're going to drag in a histogram. And then we're going to drag in something that accompanies that histogram, what's called a histogram data object, which is going to do the computations in the histogram. So I'm going to, I, I just dragged in. So I went to this palette, this one here, this here palette analysis, and I dragged in a histogram. And, I, and I'm going to... I get up so that it's big. And this is going to be a histogram, right? It's going to specify the fraction of the population that are in each bin. Where the bins are going to reflect the number of quit attempts that a person is undergone. Okay, good. Are people following? Next. we're going to add a histogram data object. That's different from a histogram. I just added a histogram, and then we add a histogram data. And the histogram is gonna depend on this particular histogram data object, but the histogram data object is gonna do the kind of work of identifying what falls in which bucket of this histogram, okay, which bin. Okay, and I should give names to them, and I'm sorry, I, I've been neglectful. So. The, the histogram, we're going to be calling it um, quit, oops, quit attempt. I'm going to call it quits histogram just to be consistent. You see, I sweat names, and I do so for a good purpose um, because they, they matter. Like, if I said quit attempts, that would... Maybe imply that some of them have never quit at all, but here someone's quitting, but they can fall back. So I better call it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm, I'm. I'm torn about it, but we have miles to go and and goals to reach. The title of this will be, um, uh, 
quits, um, uh, cone of quits, cone of quits, okay? And then we're gonna have to specify that it's, you notice it says histogram. We actually want to give this a name and we're going to need to specify it there. So this one I'm gonna call, the graph itself, we're gonna call a quit histogram. The histogram data object, we're going to call quit histogram data, okay? And this, we're gonna, we can configure. It, it's going to say what to put in the value. Don't don't worry about the value, but we can specify the number of intervals. We'll leave that for now. Okay, we'll just leave it, and we'll let it pick automatically the the number of bins. Or sorry, the the, the values. Okay. We won't specify that explicitly, and then we're going to have this histogram depend on this quit histogram data. So we have to go back here. Basically, these have to be kind of wired up today or together. Remember, I've said, look, building up these models is about adding pieces, but more deeply, it's about adding connections between them. This is a connection between the pieces. The histogram object has to refer to the histogram data object. Okay. Okay. We're most of the way done. We're almost done, but there's one thing that remains. And that's the heart of the map, or at least some of the heart. And this is a hard reality, particularly after one. We're going to need, ladies and gentlemen, dare I break the news, to add a bit of code. Can't be avoided sometimes, and this is important. Fortunately, the code is not going to be bad. Are you ready? I don't hear chanting like the football players. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna do something that's kind of um, new. Um, I know this is all kind of has blushes of novelty, but we're gonna see another construct we haven't yet seen. We're gonna go up to the this uh, agent and we're gonna add an event. And these three go together. We have a histogram, a histogram data object to compute for the histogram. And then we're going to have an event which will periodically calculate, put information in to the histogram data object. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Mm. Here we go. This is going to be called compute quit histogram. Are we ready with this? Mm? Or no, it's not me called compute. That I mean, that's just a blunt term used by computer scientists without imagination. Update quit history. I mean, that that's more communicative. It updates it, not compute it. I mean, yeah. Okay, compute or update quit history. Okay, so the job of, this is what's called an event. It looks like a little lightning bolt. Do you see that? And I dragged it in, it's an event. Do we see that? Are we okay? Okay, this is an event. And it's a little bit confusing, it says event, because it's actually more versatile. It can be a one-time event, it goes off, like a bolt out of light, a bolt out of the blue. But often we want it to be not just, we, we want it to occur cyclically, periodically. We want it to happen again and again. Here, every one, what? What do you see? What do you see? One year, every one year. So it first occurs at time zero and then goes every year. So it fires, it sits there like a chirper, it just chirps every year. It's like an alarm that goes off every year. And when that alarm goes off, just like the one to which the students woke up this morning, things have to happen, just like this morning. Um, so, we need an action to accompany that. 
to be summoned. And okay. Um, the action here will be to populate the histogram. That's why it says update quit histogram. Are we okay with this? Okay, we're gonna finish this. It's gonna be finished in about two, three minutes. Are we okay? Okay, hearing no objections, I will finish it. Just beware, involve some code. Are we, are we okay? You ready? Okay, here we go. The first thing we need to do is, is clear the existing histogram data, hmm? flush it. So we're gonna say, Quit histogram data dot reset. Reset. We're going to reset it to clear it. Okay. Reset it. So that clears it away. Blank slate. We're not going to get leaking of data from earlier with now. We want each time a complete portrait of how many times people have been quit in the population. We don't want data points from last time, last year. No, we want to reset it. So that's step one. And then we have to populate, meaning we have to fill in the values. Are we okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in order to fill in the values, this is gonna be a histogram of the number of times people have been quit across the population. So what does it need to, to know about in order to do this? We need to give it information for what? To count up the number of times, you know, um, so, so this many people have been quit between 10 and 12 times. This many people have been quit between 12 and 14. This many people have been quit between 14 and 16. We need to tell it for every person in the population how many times they've been quit, how many times they quit, right? Are we, are we ready? Okay, so we need to go through each person in the population and give it to this. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do this here in one way. There's other ways to do it, but I'm gonna do the most common. I'm gonna use what's called a for loop. For each person called P, and, and watch this, I'm, I'm gonna put it up in the big screen, don't, oh, don't worry. For each person called B, P in the population, that's what this means. For each person in the population, and we're gonna call that person P, we're going to do what with their data? Well, we're going to tell the histogram data object about it. I put a curly bracket there, or what some people call a brace. Brace yourself. Okay? We're going to say quit histogram data dot, you ready? Add. And we're going to add that person's what? What are we going to add? What is it graphing out? The what? The count of times they've been quit. And you can actually put P dot, and it will try to put this, and there's a thing called count quits there. Right? Are we okay with that? Count quits within the person. How does it know this name count quits? Where did that come from? That's what we created earlier within the person we created a variable called count quits. That's to what this is referring. Okay. Are we okay with that? I know it's hideous. There's a begin curly bracket and an end curly bracket. And the truth is you actually don't need those if it's one line. If if you feel more comfortable with you can make it like this because it's it, it's just a single line. You can do it like that if you want to. The problem is if you go to add a second line, it'll get confused as all get out. So it's a good practice to just like you mind your P's and Q's, you should mind your curly, curly brackets, your curly Q's. Are we okay with that? Build early and build what? You tell me. Often. Often. Okay. Okay. Hey, build. Build completed successfully. Okay. Who needs help? The, 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 oh my gosh, where's the Zoom window? Here it is. Here it is. Um, okay. Okay, good. Who needs help online? 
in the classroom. The, the stalwart TAs stand ready to serve. One is in deployment. Who, who needs help? Okay, uh, we need help in the front. Sector two. Who else needs help? Where are we? We're in the action area of this event. This event's gonna go off for one year, starting at time zero, gonna go off, and it's going to clear the histogram and go through each person in the population and add their count of quits to this histogram. By adding it to this histogram, it's this histogram, I'm sorry, to this histogram data object, this histogram graph is listening to this histogram data object and it's gonna update it. Are we okay? Are we okay? Okay. Are we okay? Okay. Okay, so build early, build often. What's the other thing we do? You tell me. Run early, run often. So you wanna run it? You should see something like this. What are we seeing here? Can anyone tell me? What are we seeing? And why are we seeing it based on the structure of the model? What are we seeing? So I've run it out just a little bit. What are we seeing? And why are we seeing? It? Can anyone provide an interpretation of this data that's being plotted and give a give some hypotheses for why we're seeing it? So the lead would be for already deceased. About 70% of people have never tried to quit it. Mm -hmm. Because they likely not been smokers in the first place. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And then the others are kind of spread out in the number of quit attempts broadly between a very small number two and, and something more than 10 times that. It's 11 times that, 22, right? It's sort of over a, over a range, but it's zero heavy. There's quite a few with zero. And presumably, as you say, it's of those who started to smoke, they start to accumulate lots of quit attempts pretty quickly. But there's quite a few people who haven't smoked. How do you think this would evolve? If, based on your mental model, how do you think this would evolve as we run the model? What will happen? Shift right by a lot. Shift right, and what else will happen? The zero heavy zero is going to fall, and this will go to the right, right? So this it's becoming less and less zero heavy. We had before well over fifty percent. Now it's below fifty percent, and it keeps on shrinking there. What? Why is that? Why is that that this keeps on going down? Because more and more people are what starting to smoke, initiating smoking, right? And then we have this, of those who start smoking, have these very large numbers of, of attempts. They're struggling. They're struggling. You what know? if I wanted to say you can't quit something you never started? You can't quit something you've never started. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's why there was such a zero heavy thing at first. So again, the structure of the model and the fact that we are starting it in a very particular state gives us tools for interpreting um, interpreting what's going on at uh, over time uh, for this. So we've seen a history. Okay, that's, you've done something actually, I'd say at least at the significant intermediate level, like, like building a history is not something you do super, super often every day for a model, but it is something that's well within the repertoire, and it's good to know how to do it. Now, what? Now back to what you wanted me to do, <laughs> which is to compute the number, the amount of time people have been smoking. You want it? You want it?
the old horse knows the way. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to give it to you. So, this is version 8. I'm going to post this and then you're going to see the horse perform. Okay. And it's fun. Okay. There we go. Um here we go. Version 8 is posted and we're on to version 9. Okay, so we've seen the basics of what we need to do. We've seen how to do a histogram. We've seen how to how to summarize information at an individual level about their history, the count of quits, right? It's about their history. We can't do that within a cross-sectional model. Uh, uh, sorry, a, a compartmental model gives us a set of cross-sectional views of a population. It's very rich. We build a system dynamics model at a high level of a population gives us this cross-sectional depiction of how the system evolves. It does not, and it cannot in general, give you a longitudinal portrait of how individuals involve in their history. And often interventions, the summary statistics, the data we'd like to calibrate it against, key types of understanding of dynamics, particularly in terms of longitudinal histories. We target interventions for people who have had a certain history there are certain risks for people with a certain history of adverse childhood experiences or or of um, you know particular past occurrences of infection or what have you. The fact that someone got chicken pox early in life means they can get shingles very late in life, et cetera. But here we want to have a more sophisticated type of information. So what we're going to do it's sweet. Okay. Um, got it. Okay. So we're going to do something that's uh, different. I'm just going to, I'm going to drag, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to drag in a variable and it's going to be called, we're going to drag in two variables. Okay. Uh, this is going to be called, um, uh, uh, um, uh, time starting smoking or, or, um, smoking, um, about start time. Okay. So for the current, it's, it's only going to apply. It's not the time they ever first started smoking. No, no, no. It's going to be the time the most recently started smoking. Um, so maybe I'll call it most recent smoking start time. Um, what do you prefer? Smoking bout? It's like their current bout of smoking? Or do you want to call it most recent smoking? What do you think? Most recent smoking start time. Okay. Um, okay. Are we okay with that? We're gonna give it an initial value of zero. It's, it's not gonna hold a value until they come in. Okay. Um, okay. 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 I could refer to my notes, but I'm not gonna refer. A uh, very small technical point. Yes. Um, would it make more sense to really initialize it to something like negative one? Because zero is technically a valid value if they started the model and instantly started smoking yeah. afterwards. Um, negative one would indicate that it's no value, like null. So uh, it's not possible though. Uh, actually, it, like, because, well, it's a, because it's because yeah, it's a yeah, simulation, you're going to have at least oh, yeah. some time. So yeah, if, if if the thing that I'm talking about happened, it would be like time zero point zero 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 one or something. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. If if it did, even if it did happen at zero, like um, we're not going to use its value unless they're in the current smoking state. Okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. So that's thing one. Okay. Now, I figured. So I've. A uh, good question because time is continuous. So in this model, time, the time unit is years, but that does not, I, I tried to emphasize this yesterday, but I, I, went, I need to distinguish 
time unit being years does not mean the time step is somehow a year. Time step would be a year, meaning it computes at year zero, then it jumps forward to year one, and comes forward to year two, and comes forward to year three. There are types of modeling where that's that's so-called discrete time modeling where that goes on. But this isn't like that at all. Time is continuous. Time sweeps through as fine-grained or as coarse-grained as you want it to be. And things can go off at time point zero one or time point zero five five or whatever. It, it it's uh, if we called it if we we couldn't distinguish a point six two time that they started smoking. We need to. We, we need to. Um, the time unit is a convenient way to say what does one point zero mean? Does it mean one year? Does it mean uh, one decade? Does it mean one second? Uh, does it mean one Hour, um, it's a, it's a choice of uh, what I termed yesterday a meter stick or yard stick um, to measure things. That's that's all. Just because we use a meter stick doesn't mean they're not things in the world that are shorter than a meter. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, here, this uh, this next variable will be um, is going to have a longer name. <laughs> um, so this is going to be. I, I I don't think I'm. Yeah, I, I don't know that I. Yeah, I think I think I did it for smoking one more thing uh, quite a few years ago. Um, I figured out probably a sweet name for it, but let me let me just come up with a name that's not uh, hideous. Um, okay, something like um, total smoking duration prior to the current bout, because it's not including the current one. That's not going to be in there because the current one is going to be incrementing all the time. We're not going to be incrementing this. So I could call it previous smoking duration. That ain't bad. Previous smoking duration. Previous smoking duration. That is a different trade-off of brevity versus clarity. And that's going to start at zero. Meaning what it's going to mean is if we're currently smoking this is going to be the one not including the current um, uh, the current time that you've the, the so if you've been smoking in this particular occurrence of of smoking that you fell back maybe three months ago, it's not going to include those three months. It's going to be previous to that. So I'm going to call it previous smoking duration and call it and and say it starts at zero. Okay. It's prior to the current bout. I think when I've done this, sometimes in the past, I've called it like prior to the current battle, but I've, I've done it for, for other things. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Now, okay, this is sweet. Okay. So you tell me, when is this most recent smoking start time? When is that going to be modified? Under what conditions? Where, under what pathways? Will that variable be modified? When what occurs in the model will we modify the most recent smoking start time? Base Sorry? Base action. Replace action? Sorry. The transition. The transition. Oh, relapse, you mean? But also initiation. Yeah, right? maybe anytime you enter any anytime we enter the state is the most elegant way to put it. That factorizes both of those. It covers both of those. So I'm going to say most recent smoking start time equals, and it's going to be what time? The current time. Yeah, time. Okay. Are we okay with that? By the way, this 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 basic finesse holds for many other cases where you want to accumulate, you want to keep track of like, how many years did someone spend, you know, using substances or how long did they spend, you know, um, in the hospital or something like that, uh, cumulatively over many times they've come to the hospital. Okay. So, oh, oh, no. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Some reason. Okay. By the way, any logic does have undo. Good thing to know. Okay, here we go. And by the way, if it provides extra space, you can do that. Okay, 
So people are okay with that? When we enter this state, we're gonna we're going to record this. Okay. Okay. Now this next one is going to be modified when. When will the pre the smoking duration for the previous bout of smoking, not the current one, if they're in that, but the previous one, when would that be modified? Under which of these? Okay, I'm listening. So it can update on the exit action. Yes. Or it can update when you die. Uh, uh, excellent, 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 excellent. Bravo. Bravo. That's right. Um. So we will want to be careful for both of those. Indeed, well spoken. Well spoken. Okay, so here for current smoker, um, we are going to um, we we could put it in cessation, but we could do it in general with the exit action. And wait, it's an interesting question. But you put it in the function since you know you have to call it two places. Uh, we, it's a single line, so it's not a crazy idea. It's a single line. So I'd be inclined to say, um, and there's actually going to be more logic to it because here we don't have to check they're in the current smoker state. When they die, we have to check if they're in the current smoker state. Okay. Um, and there's only one thing to do. So my inclination would be to... No, and it's not a crazy idea. I like I like your point. I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of not doing it here, but you're gonna see a function soon. I'm gonna be introducing the first use of a function. Okay, but wait, um, exits ex exits from states are not invoked if you die, right? I so, so unless there's a yeah. transition from that state exactly to the final state. it precisely yeah yeah that is. That is transiting. Okay, for the exit action here, we are going to update previous. Okay, yes, yes, we need a function. Yeah, <laughs> good man, good man, so doubly. Yeah, we need a, we need it because it, it, the logic is going to be too. It's, it, it's, 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 it's not more than one line, but it's more, it's more, um, it's got some uh, finesse to it. So yeah, we, we want to put it. On. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to our friend, the function. We're going to drag in a function. And there's actually a couple types of functions. It's a table function, which is really a lookup function, and a function here. So this one will be, um, update previous smoking duration with current duration. Or I could call it accumulate current dura smoking duration into previous smoking duration. Um, accumulate, accumulate smoking Duration. Um, accumulate smoking duration. I like that. I like that. It's not bad. Accumulate smoking duration. Accumulate smoking duration. It's not perfect, but I think it's less bad than what I just said. Accumulate smoking duration. Okay. So its job in life is to do this logic, and we're going to call it from two places. Just like Jared Ord, just like the doctors. Okay, so we're gonna. This is a function. Its job in life is to undertake a task. What task is this? Well, functions serve two goals. Um, either they return a value or they undertake an action. This is just going to be an action. It's going to do something. It's going to be a semicolon involved. I warn you. Okay. And we're, we need to specify what we do. Well, we use the function body. And we don't have to pass it any information here. Okay. Good. Okay. 
Okay. So what are we going to do? What we're going to do is update the previous smoking duration with how long we spent there right now. We're only going to do it. Only going to do it. If we're in that current smoker state. So we're only going to call this if we're in the current smoker state. So I'm going to put that in the description. That's going to be part of the metadata. Um, we only will call, so precondition, we call it, we'll call this function if we are in the current smoker, current smoker state, smoker state. And there's ways to check that and to confirm that. I'm going to go light in this right now. It's a thing called an assertion. And I could declare this as what's called a precondition. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to add to the previous smoking duration the current time we've spent in that current smoker state. How do we figure out how long we've been in that state? Can anyone say, if we're in that state now, what do we do? We take the, speak on. Yeah. Yeah. Darn right. Yeah, between the smoking starts down. Okay, so we're gonna do previous smoking duration. Plus equals. The current time minus the what? Most recent. Most recent smoking time. Start smoking start time. Okay. Now, uh, this could be criticized. I, I could create a variable called, and I need something because we're updating. This. You can criticize and it is subject to some. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to I'm going to make it more self-explanatory by creating a, ver a little. Should I do it? Should I create a little temporary variable just to make it clear? Double. Current. Strong current smoking current. <laughs> Current smoking duration, but I could actually put it in a function and come and I'd need to call it elsewhere because there's going to be some logic that's going to use it later. But um, okay, fine. Um, plus equals plus equals. So this is going to go to that. This just creates a, a, a temporary thing that says, hey, I'm going to call current smoking duration the difference between these two. I compute that, and then I'm going to add that in here. Short, sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to add in it. Okay, so we're leaving this. We're going to we're going to add to that. Okay. Almost done. Almost done. But there's one piece of. Or the little bit more logic for you have to put in. Okay. So that's great. So that's our function. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're only going to call it if we're in the current smoker state. So when we leave this state, we're going to call this function. And that's how we call it. It doesn't need any information to do with job. You may remember when you were in high school, Chris, and you used the sign function. You would give it like sine of 30 degrees, or maybe you do sine of pi, right? Um, radians. Right. Sine of pi, whatever. Um, the point is, this is information it needs to do its job. This is what's called the arguments or the parameters for it. This is the information it needs to do its job. In this case, there's no information needed. You don't need to pass it anything. You you just use begin print and print. It's like nothing needs to be provided. So we do. We, we just don't put anything inside of this. That's what that is. And we need a semicolon because we're saying do this because this is actually calling this and it's changing something. Okay. Okay. Hope that isn't too bad. You wanted it? I'm delivering it to you. We're not done yet. 
Okay, if someone's gonna die, what do we need to do? Where do we need to what do we do need to do there? If they're dying, what do we need to do? Well, it's it's arguable because we're about to delete them. Right? We can compute it. Well, we're about to delete them. But we could could. It's kind of a little bit pointless because the information is gonna be gone. We could do it. What do you think? What do you think, Wade? Yeah, like there's, it's kind of pointless unless you see that I would say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm not going to do it there. Okay. But we need one for, former further piece of logic here. What's the other thing we need? What's the other thing we need? There is something else we need to do. Well, we need a way of asking how long is this person been smoking all together? And that's going to be a function. And I'm going to ask total duration spent smoking. And how would I compute that? You tell me. How do I compute that? I will argue it has two cases. If they're a former smoker or a never smoker, what, what's the value of return? <laughs> they're not currently a current smoker. What's the value that I can return? The previous smoking duration. Any previous time. Because they're not currently a smoker. Well, that gives me all the information I need. So I'm going to return. This one returns a value. And it's going to be current smoking duration or previous smoking duration. So it's any previous smoking duration summarizes how long they spent in the current smoker state, except for any time they're in it right now. They're, they're not in it right now. So this actually, we're, not, we're only going to return this if they're in a never smoker current, current, or former smoker state. If they're in a current smoker state, we're going to return something else. And you're gonna tell me what that is. So I will say, if, do you remember how did, how do we ask if they're in a, a current smoker state? What do we do? You tell me, we've said it many times in the statistics. What do we say? In state. Yeah, you got it. secretly to those who are wondering do you need to do person here the answer is no because it knows about it here but but it's a good hygiene to do this it's good hygiene person dot current smoke current smoke for the person you don't have to remember we're doing that right now yeah okay so if it's if they're in this state we'll do that otherwise we'll return this and what do we do if they're in a current smoker state? What is it going to be? You tell me. What is it going to be, folks? What is it going to be? Oh, we could actually do it even sweeter than this. Good. We could. <laughs> we could. But what are we going to return conceptually? If they're in a current smoker state, is this all of the time they spent smoking? No, this is the time previous to the current one. How much are they current? How long have they been smoking for the current bout? The current time smoking. We had said it before. We computed it before. You tell me what it is again. Time minus the three. Time minus the, the uh, sort of time. That's what I wanted to turn into a function. You see? You see? I get personal with my oh okay and and it's this is one of these things that has some finesse it's tempting it's tempting to so this plus the difference in okay okay we're seeing the same 
darn pattern again and again. It's tempting to carve it out. Should I do it? Should I make it a function? Time minus the most, oh God, I see that same thing again. It's there it is. It's like hideous, isn't that? It's the same logic again. It's not being captured. Oh, it just troubles me. It's the same logic. Does any logic have a fine duplicate code function? No. Uh, they need that. <laughs> they, there's a lot of things they need. Fine, <laughs> fine duplicate code. Damn straight. Um, I would appreciate a control <laughs> click to go to a function. But... Yeah. Um, uh, you, you actually have that in many of these, not all. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just waiting. It's a hidden concept waiting to be, it's yearning to be born. And I'm going to be the midwife. I'm going to serve as the midwife and no one's going to stop me. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Okay, so you wanna see this? I'll see this. Okay. Um okay, so one more function for the ages. Okay. This is gonna be called current time in smoking state. And it's only gonna be called if they're in the smoking state. And we can make it more robust than that by saying if they're in the smoking state, it'll be this. Otherwise, it'll be zero. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Current time smoking state. So, you tell me what it is. We just saw it. It's just what I revealed there. It's this this code. Okay, I know this is painful. Um, and it'll soon be over. <laughs> okay. If I'm currently in the smoking state, how do I say that? How do I say it? In state. In state. State. Yeah. Person. A. Person dot current smoker. Okay. Yeah. Um, then we're going to return this. The difference in the current time. And then otherwise, we're going to return what? Zero. Point zero, and we have to mark this function a hey, return, return, boom, boom. We have to mark this function as returning a value. There we go. Happy, happy, happy. Now we we extracted the concept yearning to be born. That common expression that's just it's just begging to be represented, and we can replace this and out out black spot. We will eliminate. It's just so beautiful. You factorize it. We capture this common concept, current time and smoking state. It just feels so good. And then we do total duration and smoking. And that's what we do. We have current time and smoking state. Oh, it's just the dream of centuries. Okay. Okay. There we go. What did you? Okay. So I want to summarize what we've done. You show that last one again. Yeah. Current time and smoking state returns a double. So if they're right, in the so current. So check state. Now your total duration spent smoking can just be returned current time plus previous time. Sorry. Since they're both checking state, you can actually get rid of the state check in total duration. Yes, you can. It's and just previous plus. That's time. true. That's true. Yeah, it's sweet, 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 sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Yeah. Good man. Good man. That's exactly what I like to hear. It's just a, a well factorized situation. A, a recognized concept, a natural concept will simplify the situation. When you reveal it, 
when you identify it, when you bring it from a latent state to, to name it, it will often simplify your situation. That's exactly what's occurred here. I've served as the midwife and Jared has assisted with the delivery. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So can I summarize what's going on? I know this has been a blessing, blooming confusion for some, but look, this is what we had to do. You gave me a task. It's not a trivial task. And I think it's been performed actually with measure of elegance, but I know there's some mechanisms. Involved. So can I explain it? Hearing no objections, I'm going to explain it. You ready? You ready to know what it is? Okay, I'll explain it. Okay, here's the deal. We want a way. So, so we want, wanted a way for every person in the population, every person, we want a way of computing how long they've been spending as a smoker. So we need this. We need a way to know how long has someone spent as a smoker? Not not just not just the latest time they you know the, the, the latest time as a smoker, but any time in the life they were a smoker. Maybe they were a smoker again and again, and kept on quitting and falling back, and we want to be accumulating. And here's the deal. If they're currently a smoker. That's going up all the time. It's rising all the time. And we need a way of taking into account not just how long it's been that they've currently been a smoker, but for all their previous times. So what we did is we created this variable called previous smoking duration. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And that kept track of kind of the previous smoking duration. If they were currently a smoker, we could then keep track of how long they've currently been a smoker. But we don't want to be incrementing that all the time in some coarse way. You know, after all, we, we may want fine-grained information about it. We can't do it every week. can't do it every year. It'd be incredibly burdensome. So what we do is instead a, a simple thing. We, we have a way of asking... Give me their current time in the smoking state. And we have a, a rule um, for, for doing that. Excuse me. Uh, the total duration is unspoken. We have a, a general rule. It considers the previous one and the current time. But the current time is zero if they're not in a current smoker state. So all we're doing is we're returning the previous time, any previous time they spent. Um, but if they're in the current state, it's the time minus the previous uh, time. That's 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 the current time. So the total time is the previous one plus the current one. But the trick is we have to maintain this previous one. And where do we maintain it? Well, look, when we leave this state, we have to maintain it. It's when we leave a state that we have to accumulate it. We have to add in not only the time that was there before, but the new time. Mm -hmm. Um, and when they enter this state, we have to keep track. We have to record when they've entered so we know at any one time how long they've spent there. Um, and uh, by accumulating this previous smoking duration when we leave, we kind of keep track of their previous smoking duration. And we can always add their, their previous one to their current one. It's by virtue of this tracking the latest time entry when they enter the, the current smoking state that we can figure out how, the amount of time they spent there currently. This is not a trivial thing to do elegantly, but it is something that I periodically am called to do in a boot camp, and I will gladly oblige because what it lacks in immediacy, it makes up for in elegance in my mind. Okay. So, so this is nice. This is kind of nice. Let's finish the thought. We're going to create a histogram for this by God. Mm -hmm. Can we do a histogram of this instead of the count, time, count of times quits? Or do, do you want that still? You want to keep that? Do you want that? You still want that? Well, okay, fine. You want that? Okay, I'll give it both to you. Fine. So... <laughs> 
this what this will be it what it lacks is finesse but it makes up for in brute force um okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy all three of these well so i'm going to copy all three and i'm going to paste i don't like it but it'll get us to snacks and it's not bad it's, it's not horrible okay here we go let's let's line these up happy there we go there we go okay we're gonna call this instead of the quit histogram we're gonna call it smoking time histogram mutatis mutandis instead of count quits we're gonna be calling it um cumulative time smoked okay in fact we should really give it a better name cumulative time smoked histogram okay there we go there we go cumulative time smoked histogram okay what does this depend on well it doesn't depend on the quit histogram data it depends on the cumulative time smoked histogram data so mutatis mutandis just change this um just like this it's not going to be data one it's going to be data boom okay and then we have to update this what is this going to be update cumulative cumulative time smoked histogram that's the event it's going to go off every year and what histogram data is it going to clear? You tell me. Which one? Which one is it going to clear? Don't worry, I'll go over this again. Which one is it going to clear? Cumulative time smoked histogram. It's going to data. It's going to clear. And when it adds this in, instead of adding it to the cumulative uh, quit histogram, it's going to add what? What is this going to be? What's the crowning jewel? They're staring at me with a blank look. What's the crowning jewel? What are we going to call? How do we... What are we going to call here to compute my total duration spent smoking? No, we're going to call total duration spent smoking. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Okay, I, I think I lost everyone. Okay. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Um, I, I warned you it has finesse. Okay, here we go. Okay. Um, there we go. Okay. And begin print and print because it's a function. And there we go. And uh, believe me, I'll go through this again. Okay. So what I do just now, first of all, I copied all these. I selected all of them. And I copied control C and I pasted. That's what I did up there. So each of them is a copy. Then I went here and I called this instead of time quits histogram, I called it cumulative time smoke histogram. Basically, wherever it says time quits, I'm going to change it to cumulative time. This is going to be cumulative time smoked instead of number of quits. And oh, we need to change that. It should be cumulative time. I thought I changed it. Uh, histogram data. There we are. Okay, so this will refer to this guy. I renamed this to be cumulative time smoke histogram data. Okay, there we are. And uh, didn't change anything else there. In this guy, all I did is have it put things in here and have it add uh, to this, loop through the population, if it add to this, the amount of time they that each person has had smoked as computed by this function that we added these internal things these are just kind of secondary to this this is this is where the real computation is occurring where we're adding the previous to the current does anyone want me to show anything that i that i showed other than the food Okay, here we go. You ready? Builds early, build often. Who needs help? 
Who is how many people are beyond help? Actually, all the functions just look nice and Okay. Okay. TAs deploy into action. Okay. Who needs help? Who needs help? Help? Jeff, you need help? Sorry? Okay. Uh, could someone help? Help in the front, sector two, front row. Okay, so you do have. Presumably, we change. Who needs help? How are we doing online? Jenna asked the key question. We may be dealing with shell shock. A thousand mile stare. Okay. Okay. You asked me to do something with finesse, and uh, I apologize if it was too much. Okay. Um, for those following along and want to see this, though, I, I will run it now. And what we will see um, is the fruits of our labors, spelt, I might add, with a U. Um, so here we are. This is the cumulative time smoked across the population. The cumulative, excuse me, the, um, yes, it's a histogram for people of how many years they've spent smoked, smoking. Mm -hmm. And I would add that for this histogram, you can export it. So when I copy here, I can go and I can go to Excel and I can go paste in and it will give me the the bins uh, the fraction of the population in them and then the cumulative distribution function for what about so what fraction of the population have that amount or under so here we have broadly between zero and about 35 years or something 35 25 years cumulative time smoking so let me ask you a question about this histogram. This is cumulative time they spent smoke. So ponder that for a minute. That's totally non-trivial. Totally non-trivial. It wasn't easy to compute. Um, but it would be impossible to compute effectively in a in a in the context of a compartmental model to look at the fraction of the population in each year. Just totally up to them. Forget it. It doesn't give you that sort of information on histories. Even something like Count Tom's quit, you're not going to be able to give a history. So, so, so that should give us some pause. I mean, it, it required work. It required sweating. That's not easy. I, I think actually, I mean, to give you a sense, I think much of my lab wouldn't immediately come up with that answer. Um, so it's, it's not something that comes immediately to a modeler, but it can be done. It's, it's not hideously hard. It, it requires some attention and it, it's going to take time to sink in. But what we've done is singularly notable in the sense that it cannot be computed with a cumulative histogram, cumulative time smell. But I want, I want to sharpen your, your thinking about this. This is the number of times they've smoked over the course, or sorry. The cumulative time they spent smoking over the course of their life. So we've run this model for 55 years thus far. We stopped it at 55 years. The furthest that anyone has smoked is around 35 years. 35 years of, of cumulative smoking. Does that mean that, oh, that person must have started at age 20? Why not? Why not? They were started younger and then quit in the middle. They could have started younger and quit. Remember, this is cumulative time over all their bouts of smoking, all their occurrences of smoking. They can be punctuated by quits and so on. But here we're accumulating it. That's what made it non-trivial. That's what made us have to handle these cases for current smokers, where there's ongoing smoking versus past smoking. And never, where they never picked up a cigarette, and, and former, where 
they used to smoke, but don't now. And, and we had this logic and it was, you know, it required these functions and so on. But at the end of the day, you know, it's an interesting statistic. Health-wise, the cumulative time they spent smoking is, is of considerable interest because you can think of it as wreaking damage to the body, right? We might go beyond that and think about the cumulative pack years smoke, right? Which was a common statistic in tobacco-related epidemiology. How many pack years did they smoke? Um, and this is, you know, not taking into account the intensity of smoking, but the number of years they spent smoking cumulatively. It is a position of interest, the tar plaques in their lungs, et cetera. So it is something kind of interesting. Um, and it's interesting in light of, you know, what we have below, which is the number of times they've spent quit. I know it was hard. It, it, it wasn't easy. This, but it's very general. I mean, you see this a lot of times. Cumulative time people have spent in hospital. Cumulative time people have spent using street drugs. Cumulative time they, they spent in addictions treatment. Cumulative time they spent homeless. Cumulative time that someone has been in a, a, a violent intimate partner relationship, cumulative time that someone has spent, you know, with um, active cases of shingles. All of these things actually basically are amenable to the same pattern. The same basic pattern comes up. It's just different in incident. It's mutatus, mutandus. It's just, you change the incidentals. It's the same basic pattern because the structure of the problem is basically this. And so we can reuse this pattern. So if you if you have any needs, you know, across many, many different areas of epidemiology and health service delivery, this pattern, hard though it is to put in place the first time, demanding though it is to think about, works again and again and again. And at the end of the day, um, I hope, you know, if it, was full of buzzing, buzzing, blooming confusion. You can, you can find solace in the fact that for a given person, the total time they spent smoking, as Jared astutely observed, is simply the sum of their past time smoking before now, or any current doubt, and any time they spent smoking now. Really, that's the essence. And it's full of sound and fury. That's the essence. They have some past time smoking and then some possible current time smoking if they're in a current smoking state. And there's some bookkeeping involved in keeping track of these quantities of how long they did it in the past. That has to do with this accumulated smoking duration and this current time. But that's the essence. It's when things capture the natural structure, it boils down to a simple, simple expression like this one. Past in any kind. And with that, I will I will uh, stop uh, this lecture and I think we will pause for a well deserved break. Okay. Um, thank you. We will resume in should we do 10 or 15 minutes? What do people want? Or does some want like a club med vacation? <laughs> 10 minutes? Ten. That. What's that? I mean, is that on the doc? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> right. Okay. So 10 minutes it shall be. It shall be. Okay. Thank you. We'll resume in 10.